Uh, my name is Dave Randall. I'm a program manager in the Endpoint Manager team. You may also know Endpoint Manager by Microsoft Intune or System Center Configuration Manager. Both products are part of Endpoint Manager. If you're getting started using Intune APIs, there's a couple of different sets of APIs that are available. We're going to focus on the Microsoft Graph APIs, but there's also a Graph SDK that allows you to interact with the APIs for Intune. And there's an App Protection Policy SDK. So if you're a developer building iOS or Android applications and you want to take advantage of Intune's app protection policies, there is a MAM SDK that you can incorporate in your uh, applications. And then if you're an integration partner, there's a set of APIs for uh, third-party MDM compliance, network access control, and mobile threat defense. Those are available for partners that have a specific integration directly with Intune. Now, if you're using Graph, uh, if for those of you who are familiar with Graph, um, you'll recognize uh, generally this particular diagram. But if you're new to Intune and Graph, everything that we do in the Intune console, which is hosted as part of Azure Portal, goes through the Graph API. Now, you can also use PowerShell or third-party ISVs that have developed applications can go in, uh, go against Graph, and all of that uh, builds our IT Pro experience. I know that many of you have been working also with SharePoint, Teams, uh, OneDrive, Azure Active Directory, and all of them have APIs that are hosted in Microsoft Graph. And of course, the benefit to you as a developer is you get a consistent set of services that are hosted as part of Graph, such as role-based access control, multi-region routing, uh, telemetry, logging, authentication for both delegated and app-only auth. Our Graph APIs for Intune then um, connect to the Intune front-end service, and that front-end service is then um, routed directly to regional scale units all around the world. Now, I had mentioned a couple of other APIs that uh, are for our integration partners or for an information worker. Those APIs connect directly to our front-end service and don't go through Graph. So there are a set of APIs which are, which are not part of Graph. So if you're uh, developing against the Intune APIs, there's a lot of different things that you can uh, perform. You can do AAD device or user membership. You can perform actions such as retire or wipe devices. You can get inventory information about devices that have been rolled, enrolled in Intune. Or you can deploy profiles for configuration, deploy new applications or compliance policy. Now, a lot of times, you may be working as a customer or with customers who are interested in managing a pilot environment and a production environment. And so configuring third-party connectors or rollback, RBAC roles and role assignments, things that are more one-time operations or infrequent can also be done via the Graph API. And then if you want to um, pull together an entire scenario and automate that through our Graph API, you could do an, an entire set of pilot to production settings migration from one environment to another. Or maybe desired state configuration is of high value for you to be able to ensure that your configurations don't drift over time. So uh, in order to demonstrate a few of these different concepts, what we're going to talk about, what we're going to use is we're going to use some Graph Explorer tool. Many of you may be familiar with this, or Postman is also uh, somewhat of an equivalent to Graph Explorer, at least for being able to make and, and receive API calls. And then I'll give you a little tip on how to ensure that you know which specific Intune API calls are being made when you're looking at the console. And then we'll also spend a little bit of time using some PowerShell script and modules. And lastly, I've got some reference material here for you. So we'll leave this available um, for you to take a look at and get the information that you need for all of the different APIs for Intune. So let me switch over. I've got a couple of different tools open. I've got PowerShell. I've got our console. I've got a folder here. I've got VS Code. And uh, these are the different tools that we'll use for the demo. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to tenant administration in the Intune console, and we're going to take a look at all of the roles. Um, so we've got a set of roles here, and I've got one role that's a custom role that has all the admin permissions. So I've gone through and, and added every possible permission rather than one that's a little bit more uh, purpose built. And um, what we can then do is we can go over to Graph Explorer, 
And I'm just going to run a, a get call against uh, our V10. And this is looking under device management. So that's the main area of all of the graph API. And then we're going to look at role definitions. And when I run this, you'll see the first one that we have is endpoint security manager. And I've got quite a few roles. Um, and if we go all the way to the bottom, I think, let's see, here is our all admin permissions that we were looking at. So this is our JSON output from Graph Explorer that shows all of the different roles that we've got. Now, if, if looking at that list is a little bit of uh, a challenge, the other thing that I can do is I can append just the select equals display name here, and then we get uh, just the individual display name. So I can select any property. And if I'm interested in seeing all of the details about just one of the roles, then I can do a filter and uh, do a dollar filter where display name equals all admin permissions. And when I run that, you'll see I get all of the details for this particular uh, individual role. So now that we've, we've looked at just some basic queries that we can do with Graph Explorer, I said I'd give you a hint to understand how all of the Intune API calls are being made. So I'm going to press F12 to go to developer mode. And I've got network selected and fetch. And when I press uh, refresh here, you'll notice that we get uh, a single entry for our role definitions call. And here's the specific request URL. Again, it's identical to the one that we did in Graph Explorer. So a lot of times when I'm working with developers, they're um, looking through the API reference material on the developer site, and it's really difficult to figure out which API call matches uh, individual actions in the console. So this is a great way to be able to put them together. So we've got uh, our list of role definitions, and uh, we can go run an RBAC script, a PowerShell script, that goes and retrieves exactly the same information. Now, this is just displaying it in the console. And so here's our uh, all admin permissions role and a list of all the permissions. But let's say that I wanted to make a copy of that particular role, but I wanted to eliminate one of the permissions. So I've got another script here that will export all of our custom roles, and we'll put that out in the demos folder. And here's my all admin permissions in the in JSON output. And let's move that over to our uh, Visual Studio code. And now we can take a look and see, here's the JSON output that came from our PowerShell script. And I'm going to give this uh, a new name without role assign. And I'm going to remove this one role uh, permission. So we've just taken one out. And rather than having to click a lot in the UI, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, save this. And now it's saved back to this all admin permissions. And now what I can do is go back to our import role from JSON script. We'll run that. And the role that I want, I'm just going to uh, copy this. And I'll do that with actually the proper quotes. And it will import that uh, JSON that we made changes to. And so now I can go back to the Intune console and we'll refresh. And you'll see we've got our all admin permissions without role assigned. So that was really easy uh, for us to be able to uh, make a simple modification and re-import without having to use the UI. Now you notice uh, I've also got an action here called duplicate. And some of the features in Intune allow you to easily duplicate a, an object. But if I go over to Devices, Compliance Policies, you'll notice I've got a whole bunch of different compliance policies. And if I click on the three dots, I don't have a duplicate. And uh, compliance policies can be relatively complex. And so again, just like in our long list of role permissions, there's an easy way using Graph 
to be able to create a copy of a compliance AP, uh, compliance policy. So using the sample script of compliance export, and we'll use the same uh, demos folder. <clears throat> this will go export out all of my compliance policies. So now I've got an Android signage compliance policy, and um, we can actually, if we go, let's see, let's go take a look. So we only have one Android signage compliance policy, but now if we go run the compliance import PowerShell script, and we'll put in this. And we'll just import that. You'll notice here's all of the different settings for our compliance policy. And now we've got, uh, with a refresh, we've got a duplicate of our Android signage compliance policy. Now this hasn't been deployed to anybody, this new one that we created, and you notice I was able to create one with a duplicate name. Some of the objects in Intune allow duplicate names, some of them don't. You may have noticed that I changed the name of our role, and uh, roles are one object that doesn't allow duplicates. So we've got a variety of different ways in which we can uh, make graph calls. We can either use uh, Graph Explorer and do things uh, basically kind of one by one, or you can use PowerShell to build together uh, a whole set of scripts that enable a complete end-to-end -end scenario. Now, one thing that I um, mentioned was Microsoft uh, 365 DSC. Microsoft 365 DSC or desired state configuration is a great set of PowerShell uh, commandlets that are built off the Microsoft Graph SDK. And there are the ability to export Azure Active Directory, Teams, security and compliance, Intune, uh, Exchange, all different types of configuration, and then monitor those for drift. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. Again, the link is here in the reference material that I'll save. But that's all that I've got for demos today. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what's possible with the Microsoft Intune Graph APIs and a little bit of how you can go about getting started with them today. All Excellent, right, thank you, Dave. Really cool yep. stuff and, and awesome, awesome demo. So good coverage and good references. So really, really good. Thank you for this. Thank you.